Hi there, and um, today I've got another video for you on equipment inspections and this time we're going to focus on some of the more complex items of our technical equipment. Um, so that's things with multiple components and functions, that could be our pulleys, rope grabs, belay devices, abseil devices, things like that. Um, so on the face of it, it might seem like a fairly complex prospect looking through these different items with so much variety. Uh, well, the good news is we just follow those principles um, and I set those out in a overall PP inspection video I did a little while ago. So if you've not watched that yet, it might be worth just pausing this, uh, going back and watching that one because um, I'm not going to recover everything in this video. Um, so that'll just help you kind of get up to speed. Um, so basically with this gear, we just follow our checking principle of looking over the device, feeling for damage and wear, and checking all the operations of that device. So for instance, if you've got a rope grab, set yourself up a bit of rope uh, down at ground level, and as you're checking that device, put it on the rope, you know, check that it does function. Does it lock onto the rope? Does it slide one way, not slide the other? Do the safety catch uh, work or and hold open? Just things like that, okay? So get yourself all set up um, for doing that. And um, remember that these courses aren't a substitute for experience and doing a proper outdoor industry PPE competent person inspection course. I highly advise you go and do that. I'm just going to show you some examples of how to check gear and maybe some of the more extreme uh, examples of damage and wear that I've encountered over the years. It's not going to be exhaustive at all but it should just give you a bit of an idea of some of the stuff you're looking for. Okay, right, let's get into it. When you're setting up for your inspections then, give yourself plenty of room, good light is essential. Uh, you'll want your records to hand so you can keep a track of things as you're going along. Um, so either printout versions or digital versions if you've got a laptop or computer nearby. Um, manufacturers will often produce guidance on checking specific items of their equipment, um, which contains details of kind of wear indicators and things like that. Um, so it's worth having access to that at the same time. So I'll start with the pulley here, um, just like any bit of kit, I'm going to look, feel and check all the methods of operation. Okay, uh, I'm looking to make sure it's one of mine, so it's actually got my mark on here, but I'm also going to check the serial number against my records as well, make sure that tallies up. And then I'm just going to feel around the device while I'm looking, I'm checking for things like sharp edges, burrs, excessive wear, especially on the inner side plates of pulleys, corrosion, so particularly around the axle pins where you might have a couple of dissimilar metals there. Um, I'm going to check the sheaf operates properly, so I'll put this on a bit of rope and kind of run it along by hand and then I can hear um, and feel how smoothly that's operating, but just here on the bench with my fingers I can just check that runs smoothly, making sure it doesn't wobble on its axis because I can show that the bearings are, are pretty knackered there. Um, so yeah, this one's in good condition, I'll show you a rubbish one now. So tandem style pulley here so this has wear around the connector holes you can see it's quite a bit of metal has been you know squished off of there so that also generates a sharp edge that we call mushrooming um, so any attachment holes where you've got a carabiner especially if you use steel carabiners on alloy gear a lot you can develop these sharper edges so I can't kind of see that but I can feel that in between the side cheeks where with my finger there um, the side cheeks on this one have actually been bent together slightly where it's been put on a D-shaped attachment as opposed to an oval. Um, we've got wear on the inner side plates here, that's where it's been rubbing against a cable, particularly sharp and certainly taken quite a bit of metal off of there. Um, and if I look at the sheaves, well I can hear these running and I know from experience on these pulleys they are fairly quiet um, and if I give them a wiggle I can actually move those side to side along the axis so the bearings are absolutely shot and knackered on that one there so quite a few reasons to uh, to pull that one out of service luckily this wasn't being used for human loads just for kit um, yeah but no doubt about it that one's knackered so look feel and check the function on anything you've got so it's something like a rope grab again just going to look, feel and check all the operations. This one's actually pretty new, um, so it's very little wear on it, but I'd still check it even if it is you know, almost brand new because it can receive damage in storage. Um, so I'm going to open it up, look down the path of the rope, make sure there's no wear 
down there, no sharp areas, look around the attachment holes for mushrooming, sharp edges, check the teeth haven't worn away because that can stop it gripping your rope properly and then you and find it slides down your rope and starts to tear bits of the sheath away. Um, just here on the bench I can check some of the operations of the cam but again I'm going to go and put this onto a piece of rope lock it on, give it a tug, slide it up, give it another tug and remove it and just make sure that it does bite on properly. Um, so when I'm testing this on a piece of rope, I obviously just need to make sure I'm testing it on a piece of rope that's of a compatible diameter and type as well. Um, so yeah, this one's all looking good. Uh, one that's not looking particularly good here. So this has got a lot more wear on it. In fact, you can probably see straight away we've got a little V-notch here, which is actually really really sharp um, so over time as the rope passes through this device it's wearing the inside um, of this plate and depending on how you SRT if you lean back a little bit lean forward a bit you either start to wear this side or this side um, but I mean this is just absolutely gone you can probably just about see down there it's really taken masses of metal off there we could probably bend that side plate off really really sharp absolutely knackered um, we've got some mushrooming and wear around the attachment holes as well that's pretty yeah, pretty sharp there could probably deal with that just gently filing it um, if it was just this on its own but you know the rest of the device is pretty knackered too um, and we've got teeth flattening off here so that was probably just about starting to slide um, I got this from a rope access technician who'd done some work in an extremely dusty mine shaft um, this wasn't new for that job but it was certainly in perfectly serviceable condition um, and apparently the dustiness of the rope uh, just carved away this side plate within two days um, which is well it's incredible really uh, I know caving's not great for our gear but um, you know calcite covered ropes that's just absolutely ruined this so yeah watch your kit um, here we've got a uh, mark one petzl rig here um, again look feel and check all the functions so looking around all the components feeling the edges for sharp points um, feeling for wear so we can see we've got a bit of a rope groove coming into the side plate here I might get my calipers out and measure the depth of that there's probably not a lot more uh, use I can get out of this one before that needs retiring because of that um, I'm going to check the cam okay making sure there's no sharp areas around there and it moves freely might have to open the handle up here get this one going now for this particular model petzl give you a little wear indicator there's a little window on the cam there so as you wear the rope through that groove over time uh, eventually that little window will open up and you'll be able to see through there um, now that's not the only reason to retire a bit of gear if you've got a wear indicator it's just one of the things you check on your inspections so there are many other reasons that this device might fail an inspection before the cam is worn out um, but that's one of the particular checks there um, on this device um, so we've got a Mark II rig here. Um, if I, when I'm checking this properly, what I'll do is I'll take this carabiner off. I'll remove this captive bar so I can check all around that hole. But again, look, feel, and checking operation. So looking for wear, feeling for mushrooming and sharp edges in there. Um, feeling around the side plate, looking at the rope path, making sure we've not got any grooves. Um, on the cam for this one what we don't have is that window on this um, so I'm just looking for sharp edges feeling those making sure that's not wearing away and giving me sharps or anything like that um, so for these ones you know the wear indicator is is really kind of built into this pin it's not something you can see you need to measure it really so with this um, I've got to actually get my vernier calipers out and, and see how much metal has been taken off here in, in relation to a new one um, and uh, yeah so you might actually need to speak to the manufacturer to find out specific kind of wear tolerances on these devices if it doesn't come uh, with kind of labelled wear indicators or anything in the instructions um, so we spoke to Petzl so we know that that's one of the things we need to check on this um, so we've got an example of one that's been retired so this one here is another generation 2 mark 2 rig um, got this little wear point on the side here this is pretty common almost straight away when they come out of the box uh, they start to develop this as the anodization goes that's you know, I can feel that that's definitely removing metal there um, 
and around the side plate here we can start to see a, a rope groove forming. Um, it's a bit more serious on this than the Mark 1 because you've got the stainless plate on the alloy side and as they wear you can start to get a little sharp developing here um, so just this groove alone has, has brought this kind of to retirement criteria um, we've got wear on the other side plates side plates here so from time to time the ropes can jump off the wrong side of these and where those that's not particularly critical or or sharp I'm not too worried about that um, looking at, at the cam Again, it's free from sharp edges. There's a lot more wear on this one um, compared to the other one, which is slightly newer. Um, but a lot more wear on that pin there. So when we kind of measured this one up, um, that had kind of gone beyond uh, the criteria that Petzl gave us to retire these. So that's why this one came out of service. Um, like with any other bit of gear, once I've done my bench top visual tactile check and I've checked the operation of anything I can do in my hands, I'm then going to go and put them on a bit of rope. So not this one because we've retired this because of the wear on the pin, um, but for this one I then go out, stick it on a piece of rope and I'll check all of its functions, um, make sure it locks, make sure it does everything it should do as well. Hopefully after that then you won't feel that checking your complex PPE is a particularly complex task. Just follow those principles of look at the device, feel for damage and wear and check all the different operations of that device somewhere safe at ground level. Um, don't forget your record keeping, make sure you log in these thorough inspections and if you've got any questions go to the manufacturer. If there's any of those 50-50 decisions you're just not sure if something's good or not put that device to the side, put it into quarantine, um, take some photos and get in touch with the manufacturer. Ultimately they are the best people to ask if you've got any questions and frankly if you've got any doubts about um, the safety of a device you should just stop using it anyway um, and until you can find out definitively one way or the other if it's appropriate to use. Okay. Um, so yeah, be methodical, take your time, it's worth having a copy of the device instructions to hand uh, and don't forget to check your lifespan on things, not everything has uh, an infinite lifespan um, still these days so watch out for that okay cool thanks for watching see you again